dedicated to storytelling and visual arts since childhood. Um, after graduating with a bachelor's degree in law and a one-year experience as a legal intern, he quit his job to pursue his master's degree in filmmaking department at the London Film School in 2012. After directing two narrative shorts and practicing photography, he graduated in 2014 with his film, The Translator. It has been screened at more than 200 film festivals worldwide, including, including the Sarajevo Film Festival, the Film Festival, um, the Festival Premier Plan d'Alger, uh, the film Palm Springs International Film Festival, and the Montréal Independent Film Festival, winning 16 awards and being nominated in the Best Short Film category of the 28th European Film Awards. Kayish is an alumnus of the Sarajevo Talents and a member of the European Film Academy. Um, and the film that we watched tonight, Anatolian Leopard, um, is his first feature film. Um, it premiered at the 2021 Toronto International Film Festival, where it also won the Fripreski uh, Prize. Um, it has also won, I think, several awards at the Inter Ankara International Film Festival, at the Antalya Golden Orange Film Festival. And it will be um, in cinemas in Germany next week. Yeah? Yeah. So that's that. Um, <laughs> um, so I, I think, well, the, one, the first questions that, I, that I'd like to ask you is in relation to the, lo the location of, of the film, so Ankara. Um, and I'm asking this as, I mean, we already spoke. I also grew up partially in Ankara. I went to high school in Ankara. And obviously, when I saw the film, I was like, oh my god, this is, this is so Ankara. And it's, you know, like the kind of like <laughs> the, the, the grayness of it, right? Like the, the, the grayness and the kind of bleakness of it. And it's not like the same gray as, gray as like a Berlin gray, right? Like, because Berlin is also like 50 shades of gray. But Ankara is like gray. And, in terms of not only its weather, but also like it's like the people are kind of great too, right? It's like a civil servant city and so forth. And the color palette of, 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 of the film is really reflects that and we really see this kind of like civil servant mentality, whether it's only, whether it's like, you know, through the way people speak to each other, like so talking to each other through like the titles um, and, and so forth. But just maybe what were your kind of intentions? How did you build the atmosphere of this city um, when you were, yeah? Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome. Uh, uh, yeah, so I'm from Ankara as well. Uh, basically, I just want to uh, make a film over here, but not just because I'm from here. So uh, I choose the, the city because I would like to, to make a film about people who are uh, kind of under threat of extinction, the, the people whose values and whose point of views are a bit under threat of extinction, like this old leopard. So, and uh, also in order to, of course, uh, kind of demonstrate the change and the, the uh, what's going on in my country in recent 20 years. So Ankara uh, kind of becomes the natural habitat of this uh, story. And obviously, I was appreciated uh, that I know this city very well because, as a director, when you uh, construct your stories in a certain place, and for me, uh, specifically, the locations and the setting is very important because I am sometimes, for example, I'm living there for more than a year right now, and I would love to do something here, but uh, I really have to know uh, a lot of things, like not just about what's going on in the city in certain places, but also how the sun, for example, appears in a certain time in a certain neighborhood. So these kind of things are very important. And uh, unless you couldn't, uh, I mean, how can I say, like when you really uh, distill it, uh, then you can be able to, I think, do something honest. So basically, yeah, Ankara becomes the natural habitat of the story because of various reasons. Because for the ones who doesn't know, obviously, Turkey, uh, Ankara is the capital city, but it's an artificial uh, capital city, uh, which became the capital city in the 20s. Before, it was a little town. Nobody gives a damn to it. And uh, the new republic, the secular republic, chose this city uh, as a new beginning. And the whole the architecture, as you can maybe also realize, is quite German in the like the early periods of the twenties, thirties, uh, very European, and uh, it, it it was an idealist project in uh, every wise, 
But then uh, in the last 20 years, things changed politically and everything changed. And everything becomes a bit, uh, can I say, like a relic, like an obsolete, no. And that's why I choose the city. I, the, also, the, all the institutions are there. It's boring, as you say. It's gray. <laughs> uh, nobody visits Ankara. There is nothing to do much. Uh, obviously, if you know, there are little things to do, but people are looking down instead of looking straight. So. Uh, for these particular reasons and many more, but just want to give an answer without thinking much, I think these are the uh, kind of reasons that I uh, picked it up, I guess. Um, yeah, and you, you know, you, I mean, also, like, knowing Ankara is one thing, and, you know, you mentioned it was, you know, the, the well, it's, it is the capital, and obviously, so it is the place that is most affected by, you know, the political changes, you know, like, this is the first place that is obviously going to be affected, but there's also, what is essentially happening here, an issue of at least, um, which has very much sped up in the last 20 years, as you were saying, was like this, the, the privatization. So, you know, developments in the name of modernization and like getting rid of the old to, you know, get in more investment and building new things. And, and there's kind of this interesting story, which I'd like for you to share with our audiences about what is happening in the film and what happened in reality with the Ankara Zoo. So maybe you can um, share that with our audiences here and online. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, these are the dams that I'm interested in very much without advocating. Uh, obviously, I am always, we are all taking sides, but anyway, the, the story is, uh, yeah, the, in the beginning when I wrote the script, I was thinking about this story a long time ago. It was, I think, six, seven years ago. It was the first time I was kind of coming up with the, with the idea and then I started to write the script and my producer Olena uh, we were looking for a uh, you know some financing options this time and uh, obviously I wanted to do it in the Ankara Zoo because it was the zoo that I spent too much time in my childhood and it is very nice uh, Soviet style old uh, zoo so it's great wonderful place to shoot and when I wrote the script, then we got the financing and everything was going well in a way. And I was in Poland. This time I had a short film. I was kind of traveling with the film. <coughs> and before I went to Poland, I read an article in the newspaper. Sorry, I was telling it wrong. Like a couple of months ago, one morning I wake up and I see an article in the newspaper that a news that the Ankara Zoo is going, was going to be demolished. Uh, and a new amusement park uh, supposed to be done, as like, like in my script. And I was like, maybe that might be a joke, and I read it again, no. So and this time, of course, people sent me some messages, Olena also, we talked, and I was very upset, and we called them. They didn't answer, because in Turkey, unfortunately, uh, it's not like here. They don't talk to you about their plans, even though it's the taxpayer's money, they just do whatever they want. So we found a person, as you know, to talk to them, and he told us, yes, that's true, they're gonna do that. So what we can do, then they demolished the zoo, everything, nothing left, and they started the construction that we didn't know what's going to happen. And I was so upset, because uh, then we checked the other zoos in Turkey, nothing was exactly like this, very new zoos, it doesn't, doesn't work for me. So I went to Poland for the festival, and I was strolling, there was one day, it was snowy, it was in Poznan, very close to here. And I found, a, I saw a sign, old zoo, whatever, I walked, and I went inside and I saw, it's amazing, it was more or less like what we have in Ankara. I was so fascinated by it, and then I just went back to hotel and called my producer and said, you know, Olena, you know, I found the zoo. And she was like, where did you find it? In Istanbul, in Antalya? No, I said, in Poland. <laughs> and she was like, all right, that, was, that doesn't help, but we will see. <laughs> so yeah, uh, in the end of the day, we shot the interiors in Turkey in a, another factory building, which suits uh, the sugar factory, which was built in the 30s by the Germans. And, uh, uh, the exterior is in Poznan, in the Poznan Zoo. Obviously, we just, it's a filmmaking tricks, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I want to come also to, obviously, like the story of, of the, the film. And when you like take it at fa face value, it's like kind of absurd, right? Like there's like this really absurd situation and like there's this 
non-crime and like this mystery, but they're not, there isn't really any, a crime. Like it's from what, I mean, we were talking about it earlier, like what happened to, to the leopard and like for me, it's, you know, whatever, that's not, I mean, regard, that's not the point, but you know, there is this kind of absurdity um, in, in the story, but through this absurd story, we really see kind of like the mechanisms of how, you know, these bureaucratic relations work and so forth. And then obviously, you know, um, and the relations between the characters, but can you, perhaps talk about this this story and this absurdity and this kind of like sense of humor maybe that you you wanted to incorporate um, in your yeah in your in your script uh, yeah so the obviously the I'm always finding it very funny uh, like this bureaucratic hellish environment like a bit very Kafkaesque like in the, the castle in a way uh, I don't know, I just want to depict uh, the zeitgeist in a way, uh, but in a, a particular, a very personal, with a, a personal point of view and a personal uh, humor, I can say, sense of humor. So uh, I wanted them to be very uh, real, very scary, very close to reality, but also be very absurd, very funny, because what's going on is absurd. What was going on was absurd and still is going on, unfortunately. Like I was there a couple of months ago. <laughs> so uh, the thing is like, I, the reality is there. Uh, I can also, I, would, I can easily make a film which is very uh, realistic, but this is not my style. I like to, uh, to merge it with some surreal elements and with some absurdity because I don't know, I, it made me so sad, you know, otherwise I think this is the way that I can tackle maybe by personally. Uh, so, and I, I believe uh, that would make it more universal, more comprehensive for the international audience as well because uh, there are little things and uh, by, the, by the humor, I believe, uh, you can reach more people, and uh, obviously it's not ha 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 humor, but like a bleak, I don't know, dry humor, how they call it, like black, I don't know. Anyway, Anatolian humor. This is. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, I don't know. And uh, as I explain my intentions, so everything comes together in that way. Um, and speaking about like the, the the sadness and so forth, like mm -hmm. maybe. A uh, little bit about our main protagonist, Fikret, who is also kind of this sad, maybe lost character. Like, just he's kind of like reactionless mm -hmm. in the face of what is happening around him. Like, he's angry, but it's kind of bottled in mm -hmm. um, and so forth. So, like, um, how do you? kind of relate what he's going through, what's happening to him and mm -hmm. and what's happening in the zoo on a larger scale and also obviously like the leopard, the Anatolian leopard uh, itself. Uh, yeah, uh, I kind of knew him from the beginning very well by the heart. So this type of uh, people, that he represents the lost generation in a way uh, who try to kind of changed the country uh, very naively and uh, well-educated uh, generation who managed to uh, start well, but then unfortunately it didn't work out. And uh, he's a complicated character and a bit ambivalent kind of uh, in terms of his emotions and his uh, worldview right now because uh, he cannot uh, kind of, how can I say, attach himself to something as his, for example, old friend who managed this uh, little bar, Orhan, for example. He kind of, uh, he still, uh, I don't know, has an ideology and, you know, has a business to take care of. Uh, Fikret kind of people are interesting for me because they are a bit like the... Uh, they are not, you know, holding anything. So that's very interesting. But on the other side, I think uh, life made them conformists a bit because they have their positions. They have their, you know, uh, everybody respects him in a way. He is the Mr. Manager. So he became, instead of, a, that makes me, that made me interested about this type of people. Like instead of being Fikret, 
he's the Mr. Director. <laughs> and he doesn't have anything else. So like his relationships are kind of uh, disappearing very, and he's the Mr. Director and he can't touch himself. So this is sad, yes. But on the other hand, maybe this is the only way that he can cope with the reality. Otherwise he might, you know, uh, lose it uh, way earlier. So it's a complicated character and uh, that's why he's a bit, he has defense, mecha defense mechanism, uh, lots of mechanisms and uh, a bit conformist, uh, doesn't want to make much uh, decisions, but uh, I just want to drag him to a situation that he should act. And then of course it becomes funny because this type of person hiding things, it's always funny, I guess, in a, not a ha 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 way game, but I mean, how come he hides the leopards? Like he's a man of, I don't know, honesty and, but then uh, I just want to play around a bit like that. So also that gives me an opportunity to talk about this uh, generation and also maybe the opposition of Turkey, who I believe uh, kind of talking too much, but doing not much, you know? So yeah, and I'm also one of them, so <laughs> that's good too. <laughs> yeah. that's, uh, that's what I was wanted to also yeah. kind of probe your mind about because yes, you're, we're talking about this generation, uh, well, the characters are from this generation who were, as you were saying, like these idealists, very romantic, you know, like wanted to change um, the world or at least Turkey. And, you know, as you said, um, in Orhan's bar, we see, you know, uh, the, the, the heroes, the Yilmaz Güneys in the backgrounds and, uh, and so forth. And, and yet, you know, um, nothing happened. And they like sitting around at the table, you know, drinking a lot and complaining. And this is something I feel like it's not, it doesn't sound that foreign, like it's not, you know, a previous generation per se, but I feel our generation is also kind of like this. And, you know, we, we like to complain a lot and, you know, when it comes to taking action, it doesn't, you know, really, really go anywhere. So, you, so it wasn't just about, you know, the past, but it's also bringing the past to to, to the current, I guess, like political climates and attitudes um, in the face of, you know, the adversary that is being faced. Uh, yeah, uh, I totally agree. I guess like the nothing changed much, and we kind of took over, uh, but the problems are persisting. I guess like the the how do you call the, like the geography is the destiny in a way. So <laughs> uh, the generations are changing, but uh, yeah, the real change doesn't come that fast, but yeah, you're right. Um, maybe I'd like to turn to the audience and see if there's any questions from any of you. No questions? Not yet? Okay. Um, uh, maybe we can also talk about the relationship between um, Fikret and Gamze. Um, I feel I, I wanted to see kind of so much more from Gamze because I felt like, you know, she was like, you know, like the secret, mischievous, you know, um, uh, woman who was, you know, who assisted him in this like, you know, big cover up. And I was really hoping to see kind of like their relationship blossom. But it again, like, you know, Fikret kind of gives up on her or like gives up on them, it feels. Or like, I mean, that's how I read it. So, you know, kind of coming all together in terms of like his lack of, you know, wanting to fight for or with for anything. Um, so kind of can you, what were you, um, what was your conception of their relationship and what function did Gamze play in, I guess, like Fikret's development? Because I guess like the story is really about, more about him um, than anything else. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, I agree. I also, uh, when I was writing it and I always wanted him to act more, you know, to, because I also like Gamze better than him. So, but <laughs> uh, I don't know, in a way when you are writing and when you are doing it, the characters are kind of dragging to the certain directions. And uh, this is one of the important points for me to make a decision regarding uh, Fikret because in that particular moment when he made a promise that he couldn't hold, he kind of went out from his comfort zone uh, when he realized that the police chief is also passed away because of this ridiculous situation. And he kind of uh, realized that there is no hope. So he made a, he makes a kind of a, 
offer to her that she cannot, I don't know. So, okay, let's, uh, you know, escape together to another country and start a new life, kind of, which is too much. And uh, I just, I believe this is who he is. Uh, he, instead of uh, moving forward, instead of making change in his life, he kind of uh, decides to be the chevalier, kind of, okay, I will give myself uh, to the prosecutor and give her a life, something like that, as this uh, generation. Uh, this is a tricky thing, obviously, because when you want to uh, create a change politically in your own country, it's a super nice thing, obviously. But sometimes I think there is an interesting balance which we not we, but this generation lacks, lacked, uh, which was like they didn't uh, take much decisions about their personal lives, because life is not just about your country, it's also about yourself. So I think I, in that sense, uh, this is why he unfortunately couldn't uh, think about his life. But, you know, again, the in a bigger sense. So something like that. Yeah, for Gamze, I mean, She's a very important person, obviously, because without her, Fikret couldn't uh, cover up this because he's horrible covering up and he thinks he can do things, but <laughs> uh, so she's the one uh, and she's sweet. So uh, I don't know, like things are, I, did, I am not calculating these things of obviously as a mathematician, just the story comes to me in that way. I always see them together. But uh, as I explained, the hardest thing for me is to, uh, to, to find the climax which comes to me, the, I mean, the, the best climax, I guess, uh, for their relationship. And it end up like this. For some people, uh, I, when I was in some screenings, some people are upset about this climax. <laughs> like there was a guy, for example, on one screening, he was very angry. So, so funny, but he was very angry. <laughs> like he said, why he didn't, you know, to get, be together with this girl? It's unacceptable and something <laughs> like that. And so funny, I, he was really angry. <laughs> and I was like, I felt his anger and it's nice. I mean, and I tried to explain him and, and Ipek was there in that screening, the, my actress, and he was actually telling her, you know, uh, why did you go with the other guy, <laughs> something like that. I was like, this is not me, you know. <laughs> so, it's so funny. So yeah, uh, but this is, I don't know, uh, I think that's the reason. Yeah. Oh, hi. <laughs> I have a question. I actually liked it that um, they didn't have, um, you know, such a direct or efficient romantic relationship. I think it adds to the temporality of the whole story, which to me is like, there's this patience in the, the director <laughs> or secret, and uh, as if he guards a whole ecosystem, like a whole habitat, like where every person and animal and plant has their places. Um, and so it's not like, these are not very efficient relationships and then there come come the efficient like money donators who want a different and who want to like this amusement park which also tells about like not being able to watch like a zoo really demands time right and to stand in front of an animal and watch it and like also going like this kind of attention going away and on tribal capitalist development I felt yeah, just as a comment, maybe it's not so much as a question. But I also liked it how it, it combines maybe accidentally with Poland, because I mean, it's not so different, the uh, development, like the post-socialist development in Poland, right? Mm -hmm. And so I thought maybe also this grayness of Poznan <laughs> might not be so different from that of Ankara. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's true. Poznan, climate-wise, also very close to Ankara in the winter. For some reason, maybe it's continental climate. The trees, I don't know, the, the, the light is very close. So in the winter, they look the same. That's why uh, you're right. It suits well, I mean. Uh, and I also kind of choose it because very close. Yeah, thanks for the feedback. Uh, 
Um, it's more like a comment maybe because about what you said um, about Fikret having a title as Mr. Director, like the relationship with Gamze, uh, d I was wondering if you actually try to reflect that, the fact that he wasn't Mr. Director anymore, kind, kind of Gamze lost interest also in him, well, and not only him stopped purchasing her, or was that something you were trying to reflect as well? Uh, this is something that I also personally think. Uh, I'm not sure, but yeah, this is what I... Uh, I didn't try to reflect directly, but obviously uh, I agree. Uh, yeah, so because he's much more interesting as a Mr. Director than this guy who is trying to, you know, make some uh, stupid plans to escape, I guess, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, that's a nice catch. That's how I felt as well, but I didn't uh, try to demonstrate it. I don't know. It's not a question, actually, but it's more like a comment, I would say, that, okay, it takes place in Ankara in wintertime, but also, I've, as a person who is from Ankara, actually, I felt like it's actually from, like, 90s. Like, everything is so isolated from what's been happening to Ankara or any other place in, in Turkey, actually, for the last 20 years. And the only, from what I have in mind, like, the two scenes I had, like, I think one scene, like, he's smoking by a lake, I think Amir, and we see, like, skyscrapers. And the second one, by, at the end, that he's by the Roman ruins, and then there, we see the skyscrapers. But the point is, except for these two scenes, we, I, I, I kind of felt like, I, as if, like, it was, like, Ankara in my childhood, that in Bashi, like, in a small place. And the thing is, it's just, you don't just play with the... I, I, I felt like you don't just play with the location, but also the time setting. So yeah. what do you think of that, actually? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, that's uh, very important for my uh, uh, vision. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, because Ankara changed a lot, uh, and you are from Ankara as well. Everything changed. And I kind of like uh, to... Uh, play with the, not just the location, but the setting, the time-wise, and create my own uh, location. It's still an Ankara, but uh, an Ankara that doesn't exist. Uh, and, for example, I like Karuzmaki's movies very much, uh, the Aki Karuzmaki's, and uh, on one point, when I was reading about his films, I realized that he's also playing with his locations, and that gave me too much courage, and that was a long time ago. I really enjoy, he was talking about this bar that he is using in Helsinki. They said, okay, they closed it like 25 years ago, but it's still there for me, and there is now a horrible mall, for example. So, but for him, there is this bar. So, for I also like this idea, I think it's super nice, and uh, in that film, because I want to, to talk about uh, an idea instead of a real particular situation because, uh, and I choose Ankara as a setting. So I decided to create my own Ankara. For example, some people ask me the, who are from Turkey the, the plate number, which is 82 as well. Uh, this is also deliberate because there is no such uh, city in, in Turkey. Our, uh, every city has one number starting from one zero. It goes to until uh, 81. So, uh, but there is no a city which, is, which has 82, the, I don't know, this number. So it's normally Ankara is 06. So these kind of little things, I just wanted to make it to create my own Ankara. And I just want to leave some Rosetta stones, I, I, I believe, for the ones who are from there. Just to, of course, they would de definitely recognize and think about it. But uh, for the international audience, it's obviously it's not it's impossible to recognize that, which is uh, all right. But I don't know. So yeah, so that gives me more command on my uh, setting because then I, for example, the ice ring. Uh, <laughs> this was in my childhood. 
And it was amazing. It was so poetic place, like people are drinking their coffee is such a nice place it was, or beers, whatever. When I was a kid, I, was go I, I watched people, you know, skating. Now it's not existing anymore. There is a ring, but uh, there, it's a wedding, uh, <laughs> a horrible wedding, uh, I don't know, place that people are choosing, I don't know, the dresses and the flowers. So, uh, uh, but the, there is a ring behind, and they close the, the wheel because they found it horrible. They don't like it. So I just opened up and uh, just, of course, with Bildur, the production designer, my production designer, we just made it as a bar like in my childhood. So these kind of little things we played with the locations, uh, it was my main, one of my very main uh, interests, and, uh, and I'm happy that you also feel this think so uh, yeah so I don't know <laughs> thanks <laughs> for the question just to add on to what you were saying I felt uh, yeah the, the timelessness thing that you know how you're saying it was like from our childhood you know with the also the smoking inside you know in the hotel room there was like obviously the cigarette the kultable the, the thingy <laughs> ashtray um, in the hotel room and the TV station, like the televisions themselves and the fact that there are no cell phones and all this. So you're right, it's more like, it's like kind of this weird, as you're saying, like timelessness of both like today, but also like a past Ankara, which no longer is maybe, but yeah. I mean, I actually want to say just one thing, like for example, one side, like he's lying down on the bed and like the blanket, we had it in 90s. I mean, <laughs> we had it at my place. So I'm like thinking. <laughs> This was not, we, we actually, uh, this was inside this misafirane we called the guest house. It's a very old guest house and they still have it. <laughs> so we just take it. <laughs> I really like it. I also know from my childhood, not precisely the same, but you're right. I mean, this is so old. How come one? But they are keeping it in their <laughs> closets. So why not to use it? Yeah. Maybe I, I completely made it up, but did you hide one, lep one leopard in one of the scenes? I thought I saw one, but... Sorry, I couldn't get it. Like, the hide the, the one leopard? I thought, she, yeah, that in one of the scenes, I, I thought I saw one leopard ah. moving <laughs> behind in one of the landscapes. No. Which, yeah. <laughs> there, is, there, yeah. is only, there is only one leopard, actually. I don't know if you because it doesn't look like a leopard, but uh, in the very last scene, there is a leopard, uh, old statue. He sits next to the leopard. There is a little, uh, it's from very ancient, it's from Romans. So this is the only leopard apart from the, yeah. well, <laughs> the other leopard. But this is very nice. <laughs> it, it's a good idea. We should have talked before the movie. <laughs> I can tell you which scene and you will see. <laughs> ah, maybe, <laughs> maybe I will, you know, I, I might start to see. There is a very nice memory of the, it reminds me, uh, Billy Wilder's, there is a documentary about him and uh, he was talking about one of his movies he made. They made a huge mistake. Uh, I forgot the name, I think it's Double Intemnity maybe. He said the uh, main actor is supposed to look to the door for some reason and it's uh, like dramatically it's very important. But he didn't, he forgot to tell him. He was a very young director and you know, it was one of his first films and he's super anxious about if the audience would understand this and then he thinks that everything will be horrible. Everybody will hate the film. So uh, when the film is, you know, they are screening the film, he went to a synagogue. <laughs> he said, I went to a synagogue and prayed to God to them to see <laughs> the, the, you know, uh, to, to, to uh, like uh, perceive the film as he is looking at the door. In the end of the film, uh, everybody, uh, they are all sure that he, the actor looks at the door, so, <laughs> so it works, I don't know. So yeah, maybe from now on, if you tell me the scene, I might see the leopard as well. So. <laughs> like all the villagers in the, the movie too, right? Who, who saw a leopard, so it's very probable. Yeah, there's another question in the back. Oh. Yeah, besides the very close atmosphere to Ankara and the um, Kawasmaki um, feeling, which was very intensive for me, I um, want to bring um, the question more in a psychological way. And um, I, I think it was very interesting. You had a, a 
a dying animal, you had a director, which, which was very, I mean, he, he wanted to move, but he could. And um, was it your intention a, a bit or to bring a psych psychological metaphor in that way? I mean, you have a, you have a dying animal and, or, and there was no progress further possible. And, or, and at the end, I mean, um, it's a bit like our whole life. Uh, we try to change something, you know, sometimes it, it, it works, sometimes not, sometimes oh, it's like a, um, a dying in, in some ideas. And, uh, and for me, it was a metaphor for our life sometimes, because sometimes we want to go further, but we can't. And, um, and that was for me so close in the psychological character of the director. Yeah, I kind of agree. I mean, the, obviously, uh, the main idea is very clear that I just want to uh, uh, to uh, to make the leopard a secret, kind of. So they are the same, like both two dying animals, kind of. But uh, it's a nice uh, point of view. I I didn't directly think about this metaphor to expand it as the whole cycle of life as the human being. Uh, like kind of, yeah, true, we are all trying. That's it, that's what we are doing. Nothing much than this. And in the end of the day, we fail. So uh, yeah, it's a very good uh, point of view. Sometimes when you are writing, uh, I'm realizing that with some you know, other point, point of views of the, the audience, uh, you kind of sense things, you feel things, but not necessarily all of them are going to your uh, consciousness. They all stay in the subconsciousness. Mm -hmm. So it's a good point. Uh, I agree. Yeah, that's true. Uh, in a way, uh, yeah. yeah. Especially it's a question, um, life as a cage, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, um, yeah, I mean, we, we have uh, the possibility to go outside. Sometimes it's very, very difficult. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, we are inside, want to go outside, but uh, yeah, um, it's a hard and sometimes a suffering process, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I think in the, in the role and the psychological um, profile of the director, it, he wanted, but he couldn't. Mm -hmm. That was my feeling. And, it was a, and that was a bit sad for me as well, to feel, and, uh, and that was perhaps for me the main sadness of that director because he struck, uh, was in the old mud of the old life and whatever and reflected that and uh, see on the horizon uh, the Crease Island or a new life but was not, not really able to go there. Mm -hmm. It was very um, deep for me. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Yeah, so... Uh, I don't know, I like the zoos, amusement parks, circuses, these kind of places are for me always very interesting. Uh, maybe because it's so close, the light is so close, the fun is so close, you know, it's so close, but then there is the reality, I think they are just kind of together. So, uh, yeah, uh, thank you. So, so where is hope in all of this? If we have an extinct <laughs> city, an extinct secret, a dead leopard, um, like where do you, where's, I mean, maybe this is not directly related to the film, yeah. but you know, speaking yeah. about the director, maybe. I, I don't know, uh, I, at least he's not in jail. <laughs> he can still smoke outside, so I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's something. <laughs> the old smoking man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I oh, think. Right. So the cover up, like, very surprisingly, suddenly shows up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For me, Gamze is, yes, uh, I always felt like, you know, uh, of course, an open ending, but uh, I can see her more open, in a way, uh, to the life. And for Fikret, I just wanted to be a bit realistic. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you're right, it's not a very funny. Nice ending, yeah, I'm sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but it's an open ending. I mean, I feel also um, it's important not to reduce mm -hmm. Gamza to, to, you know, like this uh, traditional uh, person mm -hmm. wanting to be with someone who is of status. I think that reduces her a lot, right? Maybe she's actually not interested, but wants to have a lot of amusement with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
I mean, uh, of course, yeah, that's nice to... I also agree that, like, I mean, for Gamze, obviously, the romantic lead didn't work out, but she kind of changed, she kind of uh, became someone else, in a way. Mm -hmm. and, but for Fikrets, mm, it's a bit hard, you know. If I ended up it's a bit more American, then I would not sleep well, I guess, because I <laughs> would not convince me, <laughs> you know, this type of guys. But anyway, so, yeah. Uh, the thing is, I totally agree, actually, because for me, Gamze was like, first half, it's just like an assistant. She's not there at all. And then for like a brief moment, actually, she becomes like a, this character, and then she disappears again. And the point of her is like, she has her own life. She's not part of that at all. She just comes, and he just kind of sees him as the way he wants he, like to see her and but it's not that because like she's been apparently like she's if he's been working like as a director like 22 years probably she's been there like an assistant for like a very long time he didn't recognize her at all in any sort of way she comes and she call, she goes and when, and at the end we just like look at it okay yeah, there was this comes that happened it, she gave some sort of a scar to him but not actually at all, it's just she was always there and her role was just there. She just like peaked and gone, but like she has her own life. She has her own story that we don't know and we don't necessarily have to know. And I was just, yeah, I just want to come. Why, why can't we see her as somebody who, like, you know, has sub qualities that keep surprises and she's this witty person. And maybe also not like, so, like, I don't know, I also felt like maybe it's also um, simplifying her if we only see the relation in, in such a romantic way, right? Mm -hmm. It's a relationship that's there, obviously. She wouldn't have helped him if not. No, actually, a question. Oh, God. Uh, I don't know. I'm not the only one, I think, who has the question, but it, it's not philosophical at all. It's really concrete, but I really want to know what happened to the leopard. Because I thought... <laughs> no, sorry, because I thought it was the... Like, I thought that he was already dead when Fikret goes to him and stuff, uh, and that it was the investors who maybe killed him because they wanted to... Uh, like to yeah um, uh, like speed up the the sale, um, but then we were talking and uh, someone had the opposite idea that he would uh, kill or make disappear the leopard so that uh, then uh, things would slow down with the sale, and maybe there is no answer but I wanted an answer and yeah I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I don't like to answer concrete questions, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's your interpretation, and uh, like if I would tell... Because these are two different interpretations for two different viewing experience, and if I tell, okay, no, it's wrong, you know, this happened, then the uh, other in experience would be ruined, so... Uh, I don't know, would that be an answer? Is it enough? <laughs> no, I imagine that. Yeah, I, I wanted, I thought you already had a concrete uh -huh. idea, but yeah, probably that was not the point of the movie, but I already had an idea actually just because before watching the movie, I just read the like plot, yeah, synopsis. Uh -huh. So I already had the idea that the director wanted to keep the leopard so that he would keep the zoo. Mm -hmm. And so I started the movie already with this idea, so ah, okay. maybe that's why, but you, it yeah. was not the point of the movie, but I thought there would be the answer and yeah. Okay. No, no, yeah. yeah. You catch him after the film, so you get the secret yeah, answer. I will tell you, <laughs> yeah, I will tell you the secret. <laughs> Um, 
Any other questions or comments? Um, maybe like more of like just to, to conclude like a more technical uh, question. Um, this is a four country production, right? So we have Turkey, Germany, Poland, and Denmark. So technically, how how does that work? Like. Um, you know, we've seen, we, we know co-productions, four countries seems like a lot. Um, how did that kind of um, happen? Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it, but <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the European funding scheme works like that because this type of movies, obviously, uh, you cannot get much private investors on board because uh, it's not for making profit, even though uh, you never know, but uh, so the yeah, Turkey is the the main country, and then the we were supported by the minority co-production schemes by the Danish Film Institute, Polish Film Institute, and the uh, MDM. So uh, there are pros and cons. Like in a way, you're right. More people, more problems. It's always like that, like in everything. <laughs> so. Uh, we got the sound from Germany, the sound engineers and the sound post-production are all done in Germany. And uh, also the VFX and the part of the color grading uh, was done in Denmark. And we obviously shot in Poland, so uh, this is much more organic relationship. Uh, yeah, it's good, but you know, the, the white, uh, the things to different countries, sometimes time-wise, energy-wise, and not that easy. So for me, particularly as a director, uh, artistically, sometimes it gives me a, gave me a hard time because uh, I wanted certain things in a different way, but they tried to convince me with different things because everybody wanted some uh, HODs, we call the head of the departments. Uh, they want me to, for example, use a Danish DP or a German somebody else, but I already have a core team, so and they are not from either Dan Denmark, Germany, Poland, so it's not helping. <laughs> so my DP is from UK, my editor is from Brazil, my production design is from Turkey. So these are important uh, positions that the, when somebody supported you, they want you at least to use one of these positions. But uh, in that sense, it was hard. But I, I, of course, appreciate. I mean, everybody did well in their part. But as a director, I can tell you it's sometimes a bit hard. <laughs> Especially for like a first feature, too. <laughs> yes, it's a yeah. first feature as well. Yeah, exactly. So I made some shorts, but uh, I never did a feature. And it's an experience, and yeah, obvious. Um, so if there are no further questions or comments, I think we can close this session. Um, thank you so much, Emre, for being with us, uh, for sharing your film with us. Thank you all for being here um, physically in this space and to all our audiences online. Um, have a good evening and see you all next week for the next episode of Chromatic Wednesdays. Thank you.